welcome to my mobile gaming quest, my fellow mobile gamers, which is this years long journey at this point where I search for the best new mobile games and I share them with you guys right here on YouTube. And today I have found something really awesome. It's a game called Random Dice and it's a multiplayer tower defense game, which is a type of game I've never really seen even attempted before, but here it is in all of its glory and today we're gonna check it out. So it has all the strategy of a tower defense game, but then mixed with PVP and co-op game modes and a Clash Royale-like unlocking system for towers. Now, every tower in this game is a dice, by the way, so that's where the name comes from, and they each have attack patterns that are unique, and they have unique attributes as well, but unlike traditional tower defense games, we don't actually get to pick which tower we exactly want to place at which point in time, nor do we even select where we want to place the tower. We do select a team of five towers to take into battle, though, but during combat, we've got a mana bar that fills up automatically over time, which you guys can see down here, I'm tapping it right now on the screen, Screen. And then whenever we've got enough mana saved up, we can tap a button to spawn a random tower. And that's what we've been doing so far in this level. And these towers then get placed at a random location on this three times five playing field and they start attacking enemies automatically. Meanwhile, our opponent, of course, does the same. And whenever we kill an enemy, that enemy will spawn on the opponent's side as well. So as you can imagine, that means that things get more and more intense over time in these battles. But here's where it gets even better though, because whenever we've got two towers with the same color on the map, we can merge those two towers. So let's actually start doing that right now, because we're losing at this point. Look at this, it's really not going too well for us. But I think if we can keep merging fast enough and uh, you know, with a bit of luck, maybe we'll be able to turn this around. Although, admittedly, now we're starting to lose HP. <laughs> oh man, okay, there we go. We lost this um, PvP match here. It seems like the opponent we were playing against clearly had a better strategy or maybe just uh, better towers than us. That might also very well be the case. Now, because we died so quickly in the match before, let's just head into one more match here because I want to show you guys that whenever we merge two of the same type of tower, we actually don't know what we're going to end up with. We might merge two uh, gray towers, for example. Let's try that right now. And there we go. We get a level two red tower instead. And now if you really think about it, what this means is that since each of these towers serve a certain purpose because of their unique attack patterns, it means we might not always want to just merge immediately because there is a chance that we'll essentially lose that type of tower if it changes into a different tower once once we've merged it. So for example, if we want the blue ones, we probably shouldn't have merged those two uh, <laughs> tier one or level one blue towers because now we don't have any of those anymore. And so what that means is that the special attributes of that tower uh, aren't really there anymore. So for example, the blue towers would be able to slow down enemies, but because we merged the blue towers, we don't have any more of that. So now we did get a new uh, tier two blue tower though already so we're doing quite okay here I feel like it does look like the enemy is a bit faster at dealing with his opponents though so what we might want to do is we might want to spend some mana on upgrading our towers this is another thing we can do so we can buy for 100 SP down here in the bottom of the screen we can upgrade the red towers or we can upgrade these black towers I definitely want to do that uh, but we also do have to remember to keep buying new towers of course it looks like the opponent is doing a bit too well at this point frankly so let's keep merging Okay, so now we have a really strong blue one, so that makes me wonder, should we buy an upgrade for the blue ones? Frankly, guys, I think we're gonna lose this match as well. Now, what you didn't see is that in between this match and the match we played before, I actually took another match just to practice a bit more. I just edited that out, and that one we won, but of course... <laughs> But of course, now that I'm recording again, we lose this uh, We lose this match. But hopefully at least you guys have gotten a good idea of the basic strategic thinking of this game. This whole randomness element of the game adds a lot of fun to the gameplay, I feel like. It's a good chunk of strategy, but it's also a decent amount of randomness that keeps things interesting and unpredictable. Because of course, whenever something unpredictable happens, we have to react fast enough. And that in its own right is sort of a tactical or strategic element to this game that I haven't seen in that many other other mobile games. Anyway, that's basically how the combat system works. It's really fun and it's also strangely addictive. At least I've been somewhat glued to my screen for the past couple of hours. Now, then we of course have this upgrading screen for our towers and let's have a look at that real quick because I talked about the different attributes of these towers. So I want to show you guys that. For example, this blue tower here or this blue dice, it slows down the target's movement speed. Whereas, for example, this one over here, which is currently my favorite dice, by the way, it will have its attack power increase with the number of gear dice connected. So this is a gear dice and the more we have standing next to each other on our playing field, the more damage these towers will each deal. So that's currently my, uh, you know, my go-to strategy during combat. Basically, get as many of these gear dice 
as possible. We can upgrade each of these towers, of course, to make them stronger whenever we have enough of the same type of dice. So currently we don't have anything we really want to upgrade, but I guess we can always go for upgrading this one just so you guys can see. This increases the attack power in this case, and it uh, lowers the attack speed, or it increases the attack speed, but it lowers the amount of wait time between attacks. Let's just do that. It only costs five gold. We can actually upgrade it twice or three times, it seems. So five gold the first time, 10 gold, and then I think it was 20 gold the last time. Now, the way through which we get more of these towers, though, is where things really start to get interesting, because typically you would get new cards or new units by playing QP matches, winning a loot box, and then waiting for that loot box to open. But here in Random Nights, we don't have any wait time loot boxes at all. Instead, we've got this battle pass-like progression system, which means we get some premium currency, we get in-game gold, and we get new cards for free from simply playing the game. And then, of course, if you buy the, the VIP or the premium royal pass, then, of course, you get even more rewards. This is something we've seen in, in pretty much every battle Royal game and also Clash Royale and frankly most mobile games have a similar system these days. And since there is no energy system in this game we could basically play as much as we want. So that's a pretty nice setup frankly. But there's another way to get towers though which is through this co-op game mode. And this is where things get really interesting because this co-op mode means that we can earn new dice without having to play against other players at all. And let's actually go see what sort of rewards we've got waiting for us here from my most recent endeavors in the co-op game mode. So it looks like we have a chance of getting a legendary dice and we're gonna get two rare ones for sure. So let's open up this chest and see what we have waiting for us here. We've got the gamble die. We've got sacrifice die, which we already have. Oh, here's a new one, absorb die. That's pretty cool. So let's go check out Absorb Die. What does that one do? Absorbs SP from the target. That's interesting. So I guess this is a way... This is probably very useful, especially in the beginning of a level, because it means you can deploy more uh, towers faster. SP is the type of... It's basically mana, right? SP is mana, and this is what we need to deploy to deploy new towers. It doesn't deal a lot of damage, though, and it targets a random opponent. You know what? I don't think I'm gonna... I don't think I'm gonna use this one. And also we didn't really get any of the units we were really looking for. So instead, let's just head into a co-op mode and see if we can get some awesome new units and hopefully we'll be able to get some of the ones we're actually looking for. Now, the co-op mode is really awesome because it means that as a free player, we can basically just play the co-op mode over and over again until we feel like we're strong enough to start participating in the PvP. If you lose a lot in PvP, just play the co-op mode basically because of course, a paying user will have an easier time in the PvP mode because they can pay to unlock new towers immediately, but with this co-op mode, at least us free players can relatively easily grind the best dice as well. You guys saw that there was a chance of even getting a legendary dice through simply playing this co-op mode and then opening those chests that, again, we don't have to wait for, we just have to play the co-op mode enough. Now, after we've played five rounds of co-op, though, we do have to watch an incentivized video advertisement to get five extra turns or we have to wait a day until we can play more of the co-op mode. But at least we can continue without paying, which I think is really cool. And I don't mind watching an advertisement between every five matches, because most of these matches are actually pretty long, as you guys can see. Now, look at this. We got two of those gear towers next to each other. So now they are starting to deal more damage. And I think it's time to start upgrading those gear towers as well. As soon as we have 100 mana, there we go, upgraded. Now they deal more damage. Now we just need more gray ones, I guess, so we can merge some of the gray ones and hope that they turn into a gear die as well. <laughs> so, uh, so that's the strategy here. So in this co-op mode, by the way, we're working with another player, of course, in case you didn't guess that already, to prevent any enemies from hitting the door at the end of the map. If just a single enemy hits that door, then uh, we're done for. And so it's a bit like PvP, but we're just working together this time instead of against our opponent or the other real player. For me, this has also been a great way to learn the strategies of high-ranked players, just observing what they do we can very quickly improve our strategies. And so that's also a good beginner tip, you know, head into this co-op mode, just see what other players are doing. For example, the other player we're playing with right now is already rank three and we're still only rank one. So we've got lots to learn. There are many, many dice in this game as well. So by just looking at what other players do, we can also learn how those dice work. Now look at that, we got, oh, and we got another gear one. We got a lot of mana was what I was about to say, but we got a new gear die that is so cool. Uh, let's see if we can have even more luck. Okay, so that's another gear die, but it's not connected to the existing ones. So what's the best strategy here? You know what? I think it's time to upgrade our gear die even more so that they can deal more damage. Now, we could choose to risk everything and merge these two gear die towers here. I am a bit afraid of doing so because it might turn it into a different type of tower, but you know what? 
You know what? No, I'm gonna merge these two over here instead. Oh, and there we go. We got another two star or level two gear tower. That is so cool. We've got a bit of luck this time, it seems. That is very, very welcomed. Now, we actually got another gear tower as well. So our strategy that I talked about before of basically just deploying as many of these gear towers as possible is really seeming to work out pretty nicely at this point. I do wonder if eventually we can fill up almost the entire playing field <laughs> just with these uh, gear die. That would be kind of cool. Now, I do wish that this game had more players though because even though matchmaking is very fast, it isn't always super balanced right now and the game just cannot add its clan system and friend system fast enough. Those social elements aren't there yet. Oh, and we won this match, or I guess we lost, but we earned 14 of those tickets. You do eventually lose in, in the co-op mode, of course, because you just keep playing for as long as you can, and we earned 14 out of 40 cards that we need to open the next card box. Anyway, as I was saying, those social elements really cannot be added to the game fast enough. They're gonna add a nice additional element to the game, and, you know, things like being able to send cards or towers that you don't need to your friends, just like we see it in Clash Royale, that would be a great addition to this game. Now, fortunately, the developers seem very active and the game receives very frequent updates, at least monthly so far, it seems. So I am pretty confident, somewhat confident at least, that we'll see these features added eventually to the game if we just wait long enough. So yes, overall, this game has a pay to progress faster monetization system, but there are great ways to compete as a free player. And most importantly, the gameplay is unique and it's actually fun to play. So that will be my conclusion on this game. I think I'll keep it installed just to see how it develops over time. But let me know what you think about it though in the comments down below, and then I will head into the mobile gaming news of the day now, which is that it has now been pretty much exactly two years since PUBG Mobile released. And during that time, the game has reached an astonishing 600 million downloads across Android and iOS, and its 2019 esports tournament got over 500 million views as well across streaming and video platform. And yes, that was 500 million, half a billion views from the PUBG Mobile esports tournament. So that is not counting the PC and console esports tournaments, which is just pretty crazy to think about, honestly. But that was all I had for you guys today. I hope that you will have a fantastic rest of your day. And until next time, just keep gaming, stay awesome, and I'll see you guys soon. Oh, 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 oh,